In this video, we're going to prove a little bit more than Wilson's theorem. Wilson's theorem states that if p is prime, then p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1. We're going to prove something a little bit bigger. p is prime, then this, yep, we're going to show that. But we're going to show it the other way as well. This is if and only if. If this is true, then p is prime. If this is true, then p minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod p. Okay. If you like seeing mathematical proofs, then please subscribe to my channel as this is all we do. Now, I'd like to save or prove Wilson's theorem at the very end. So, let us do it to the left. That is, we're going to assume this and then conclude that P is prime. Okay, so let us suppose P minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod P. Now, suppose that n divides p, but n is not p, and n is not p. Okay, so we want to show that n is 1. We want to sh show that the only thing that divides p, if it's, n if the number n that divides p is not p, then it must be 1. Okay, so n can only be one of these numbers. 1, 2, 3. This, we want n to be less than p. Okay, so now if n is one of these numbers, then n is actually going to divide that implies that n is going to divide, let's say it's slightly different. It's going to divide 1 times 2 times 3. Eventually, we'll hit n all the way up to p minus 1. n will go into this because n is one of the factors. So n is going to divide any old way of writing this. But that's p minus 1 factorial. So n divides p minus 1 factorial. But this statement up here, that says that p minus 1 factorial minus 1, that p divides it. p divides it. But n divides p, and n divides p. So, by the transitive law of divisibility, if n divides this, and this divides that, then n divides p minus 1 factorial minus 1. Now, when I bring this to the other side, it should be plus 1, sorry, should be plus 1. So, what exactly do we have? We have that n divides p minus 1 factorial plus 1, and n divides p minus 1 factorial, and n divides p minus 1 factorial. Well, that implies that n must divide the difference. This minus that. p minus 1 factorial plus 1 minus p minus 1 factorial. But that implies that n divides 1. 
octopus. That's just one. Okay, so this implies that n is equal to one. And somewhere I stated that I want to show that n is one. So if n divides p and n is in this set, then n must be one. Now notice to prove that, that p was prime. So that finishes this reverse direction of our proof. That goes Let's get rid of this and then we'll look at the one, forward direction. P is prime. Okay, so we just p finished proving the reverse prime. direction. Now we're ready to prove. And that's what I wanted to show. So let's state it. Since n divides p and n is in this set 1, 2, up to or p minus 1. If that implies that n is 1, well, that implies that n is prime. Sorry, that's ridiculous. That implies that p is prime. The only number that goes into p is 1. That means P is prime. And that's just what we wanted to show. If we're given this, then P is prime. So now we go in the other direction and we basically prove Wolfen's theorem. That's the other direction. Now, so. We're going to uh, assume that P is prime. Now, to use the proof that I'm going to do, we need to do two separate cases. If P is equal to 2, we want to show that P minus 1 factorial, which is 1 factorial, which is 1, which is congruent to 1 mod p, because p is 2. And this is supposed to equal to negative 1 mod p. Sorry, mod 2. Now, I can take away 2 in mod 2, because that's 0. And I'll get negative 1. So this is congruent to negative 1 mod 2. So I showed that this is congruent to negative 1 mod 2. P is 2. Now, when P is 3, I want to show that P minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 mod 3. Well, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 factorial is 2, which is equal to 2 mod 3. And we have every right to take away 3 without changing the value, because in mod 3, 3 is 0. 2 minus 3 is still 2, but it's also minus 1. So. That's just what I have. So we proved it for primes 2 and 3. So now let us assume that P is 5 or more. Why did I skip 4? 4 is not prime. Suppose P is bigger than 5 and P is a prime. Now. I want to group up the inverses in pairs from the numbers from these numbers I want to pair them up 7 times 3 is 1 make believe so I pair up 3 and 7 but maybe some numbers are their own primes sorry their own inverse so we consider 
x squared is congruent to 1 mod p, but that's actually the same as taking away 1 from both sides, x squared minus 1 equals 0 mod p, but that's exactly the same as x plus 1 times x minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p, because all I did was factor that. Now, in mod p, you can take two numbers less than p and get 0. In mod 6, in mod 6, or you can take two non-zero numbers less than p and multiply them together and get zero. In mod 6, we can do that. 2 times 3 is congruent to 0 mod 6. But 2 is not 0 mod 6. It's 2 mod 6. And 3 is not 0 mod 6. But if we play this game in mod 7, okay, if we play this game as mod 7, you can't multiply two numbers that are less than 7, but not negative, between 0 and 6, and get 7. I mean, you, you can try. You can try 1 times 2, 1 times 3, all the way up to 1 times 6. Then you can try 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 6. 3 times 4, 3 times 5, 3 times 6. None of them will multiply out to 0. Because 3 times 4 cannot be divisible by 7. 7 is prime. Okay. So, what we know is that this implies that either x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 1 is 0. Well, the first one implies that x is negative 1. x is negative 1, which is negative 1 mod p. Or x is equal to 1 which is congruent to 1 mod p. Congruent to negative 1. So, here's one answer. And I'm going to add p to this one. So, this imply because p is 0. This imply x is congruent to p minus 1 mod p. Okay, so this number is its own inverse, and that number is its own inverse. Okay, but that's it. We proved it. Those are the only two numbers from 1 to p minus 1 that are its own inverse. So now, consider p minus 1 factorial which I'll write it this way, is 1 times 2 times 3, all the way up to p minus 1. In fact, I'll even change the colors of these two. Now, this is equal to 1 times p minus 1. I brought the two red ones together. 1 times p minus 1. Now, this here is a set of p minus 1 numbers. Now, if I remove the first and the last, then I'll have two less numbers. I'll have p minus 3. But I know since p is at least 5, Even if p is not 5, p is odd. But when I take away 3, this number will be positive. This is going to equal an even and 
positive. That's why we wanted to remove or isolate the cases when P is 2 and 3. Okay. So, the nice thing is that not only are there a... So, I just want to put in P minus 2. So, up to P minus 2 times the P minus 1. There's an even number of these numbers. And it's not 0 or negative. It's positive. So I can, I, I can pair these up. I can say 2 times 2 inverse. That's 1. And 2 inverse is not 2. The only numbers that are its own inverses are 1 and P minus 1 times 3 times 3 inverse. Now, there's a little bit, of, okay, and so on. There's a little bit of hand wave in here because it might be that 2 times 3 is 1. Okay, so when I say 3 times 3 inverse, I might be duplicating. With that being understood that I don't really have 3 and 3 inverse here in case that digit is 3. If three, if 2 inverse is 3, then I'm just repeating. But even if I am repeating, even if I am repeating, I'm just multiplying them by 1 too many times. So I pair them all up. And... This is equal to this, which is P minus 1, times this, which is 1, times this, which is 1, times many more 1s, mod P minus, mod P, this product is P minus 1 mod P. But here it is, P is 0, that's congruent to 1 mod p and when p was five or above we just showed that this is equal to that and let me say that more carefully if p is five or above in prime we showed that this equals this and for the other primes namely two and three we solve for that and for every number Every prime number above 5, we just did a proof for all of those. So, this finishes the proof of Wilson's theorem, at least this last half. And altogether, we prove something a little bit more rigorous than Wilson's theorem. We did, if, oops, we did if and only if. Normally, it just goes that way. Wilson theorem is P is prime implies that. It was never this implies that. But that's also true. Okay, so it's if and only if. It's a little bit more than what Wilson said back in the day. If you like seeing mathematical proofs like this, subscribe to my channel. This is all we do. Click on a video and it will be a proof. Okay, let's formally end this proof. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click the like button. And most of all, watch and learn.